last time we were uh, trying to look at atmospheric multiples, something quantitatively. So I think this was almost two weeks back. And I can go through this story and then we'll come to some more details there. So this is the basic data that one should try to explain quantitatively. And of course now we have data from many more channels through going to your but to explain this, we said that if you put neutrinos in our different masses and some mixing, then we get this as the probability of conversion. And uh, just qualitatively, if this is the probability, this can explain all the features that we saw in the earlier. Then we try to look at how to quantify this. So we define this value of chi square and try to see whether the hypothesis of no oscillations gives us a reasonable chi square. Turns out that uh, it gives a reasonable chi square for electron like neutrinos, but not for muons. So therefore, we say if you look at these numbers, this looks like chi square is 2.8 per divided by 4 plus 0.7 per degree of freedom, approximately 1. So therefore, this name will be good way. Uh, whereas for muon type neutrinos, this is 30 by 4. So almost uh, 7, 7.5 per degree So not a good. This says that something needs to be done for muon type with but perhaps not a point. So this uh, as well is a, a, a good quantitative uh, uh, In fact, when people give you basic values and show you plot, that's what they will do. Okay, so they will make a plot of parameters like theta n square and sin square to theta. And at any point, you will calculate the value of chi square. Okay, so each point you will know what is theta, you know what is delta. So you know what is probability. So therefore, since you know probability, you know what is n theoretical. And n experimental is what you measure. So at each of these points, you can calculate chi square. Then you find what is called as the best fit point, which is the least chi square. And then you have got these contours. And they have certain confidence levels. Uh, at some point, uh, we can actually complete like what these things are. But the meaning for this blue particle, for example, this is called as 99 percent confidence level, is that if you do the experiment 100 times, it's expected that 99 times you will get your parameter values as variables. So very often people just quote 99 percent confidence or 90 Quoting this is much more uh, real than giving you this figure. But this figure is a single point, and that region doesn't tell you much information. It gives you region, but doesn't tell you what area is. So, current value of mixing parameters are like this. So, about 2.5 times 10 to the power minus 3 electron volt square is the delta n square, the atmospheric neutrino, and angle is approximately 40 times. Okay, so, this is plus minus 90. So these two numbers should somehow be known by that. So to explain this, okay, to confirm these atmospheric neutrinos, since they are all obtained through data of which the flux is uncertain, because we have to know about cosmic rays and atmosphere and blah, blah, blah. It's good if you can have an experiment where you have a known source, known detector, known distance, and do a very simple experiment. So you keep your L fixed, you keep your E fixed, and then determine the value of your time to the That is TVL uh, experiment. So we had two such experiments. One was called K2K, and this gave the <coughs> conference level given as shown by this green curve, and you see it overlaps with the supertonic Monday curve. And the next experiment was MINOS. Again, you see the curves by minus, and these curves again overlap with the superparameter. So this means that the parameters we get by using only atmospheric data, the superparameter, exactly match with the parameters that we get by doing a simple source detector called short different experiment. So we did two very distinct experiments that found that the data can be explained by the same hypothesis which is that neutrinos have masses and they mix. And even quantitatively, 
you got the exact the same delta n squares and exactly the same value of theta. Yes. So all these go on to tell you that most likely the hypothesis of uh, the oscillation is the right one. So in fact, uh, it's difficult to calculate uh, chi square for neutral oscillation for atmospheric without knowing a lot of details of the experiment. So you can't do it immediately. Okay. However, if one does that, one would find that the value of chi square per degree of freedom that you get would be close to 1. Okay. And this will say that the fit that you get by using uh, oscillation hypothesis is is there. <laughs> so, the first level we agree that delta n square and theta kind of solution gives us the right solution. The question now is of course, what we did is compared oscillation hypothesis with no oscillation hypothesis. Okay, we said that no oscillation was bad, oscillation was good. But the question now is is oscillation the best hypothesis? So you have to look at alternative hypothesis, which can also explain this data to some extent. So let's try to look at some of the alternatives and see how we can deal with it. So one hypothesis is not a hypothesis, it's something that always happens for it. Okay, so let's not look at things that we have ignored in this oscillation business. And those are to do with the phenomena of covariance. So what is what is this covariance? So if you look at any interference experiment, so let's say you look at your double slit pattern. So what happens is, in double slit experiment, you get two slits, one screen, and uh, uh, the waves from these two slits interfere, and you get some interference. Now, for this, it is required that the beam that enters the two slits are coherent. So for example, you know, if you uh, hold this beam very far far away, okay, then it is possible that these two won't be coherent and you will not see it. So, for any internal experiment, what is required is we should know the exact phase between the two beams. So, then and then. So, for interference, we need two beams at the same point and they should have a phase difference. Okay, so, these two particles are required at the same point and phase difference okay, for any interference. What we are seeing is interference experiment. Oscillation is interference. You create a new mu. Okay. New mu can travel to your final detector either as a new one or as a new two. Okay. New one undergoes different uh, phase change. New two undergoes different phase change. They come together, and the phase difference will give you the oscillation for interference. Okay. So now let's look at some cases when this simple picture is not true. So, one simple thing is what's called as wave packet separation. So, what does this mean? So, let me try to draw something. So, what do we have? So, as I said, we initially created this new view in the atmosphere. This new view traveled as new one and new two. And finally, they came back at this detector. And then you found the value of E. This was our expression. So for this to succeed, you need two things. Okay. Firstly, add the detector. I should have new one and new two simultaneously. And they should have a phase. So let's look at a realistic situation. So this will be true if all these uh, wave packets have infinite size. But normally what happens is when neutrino comes out, the neutrino wave packet will have a finite size. Okay, this we can estimate that later, but you can imagine that the neutrino comes out of a nuclear reaction. Okay, so it can come out only while the nuclear reaction is taking place. So it's not an infinite size. Okay, so it has a finite size. Now what happens? Now, so let's say, now I draw it as a wave packet. Just. Now this wave packet separates, well, it's a superposition of new one and new two. This is a new wave packet. 
What has happened now is with the probability cosine square theta, mu one arrive at the detector. Now what happens? Mu one comes to the detector, but we cannot detect mu one. We only detect mu nu. So this mu one will be detected with the probability cosine square theta. Okay, so this mu one will be detected with the probability which is mu one. Mu mu the whole square, cosine square. Similarly, this mu two when it arrives will be detected with the probability mu two mu mu the whole square, which is sine square. This is the probability of detection. n mu nu, n times cosine square theta will travel as mu ones. When n times cosine square theta reaches the detector, n times cosine square theta times cosine square theta will be detected as mu. See that there are two different things. One is probability that you get a new one. 
Uh, if you have to have a new one, is n times cosine is cosine square. Given that you have a new one, the probability that you will see a new mu is also cosine square. So therefore, if you want to see finally how many of these new mu's are observed as new mu's through new one, that is cosine to the power four. Thing. So if you want to see how many uh, neutrinos came through new one channel, that is so new one channel gives you cos to the power four theta. Cosine square theta because the fraction of new one originally is cosine square theta. And cosine square theta finally because out of this new one you only get new mu's and the rest of the part is not detected. Similarly, if you go through the mu2 mode, the amount of mu2 you generate is sine square theta. And when you come to detector, you detect it the probability of sine square theta, the sine to the power 4 theta. So, mu2 channel. Let me write down our standard oscillation curve. What do we have? We have P mu mu 
this one minus sin square to theta sin square of So remember last time we talked about what happens uh, when we don't know the phase rent. This energy can get averaged out. Large energy. So then we said that this gets averaged out to one half. And you get one minus half sin square. Okay. So what wave packet separation gives you is exactly the same as what you would get if you were not able to measure this phase current. This phase was too bad. Right. So, we are giving separation. So, now let's look at other processes or other uh, things which can cause such an average because there are many such things. So, so we should know about it. So, so, one reason was real packet separation, which we saw now. Second reason is if we are not able to figure out what this quantity is. So which means if you are not able to figure out what the value of gate times for n by 4 is. So what does this mean? This means that you know, we don't have a negative separation. So at simultaneously my new one also are you two also are that is fine. If I want to see oscillation patterns, I should be able to tell you what is the phase difference between new one and new. This is the phase difference, right? So delta x n by two v is the phase difference. Okay. So which means I see oscillation pattern only if I am able to figure out what is the value of delta x for l by two. So we buy this argument first. If I cannot measure this, I have to average over all possible values. So if I average over zero to two pi, I get the value of half, and I simply get one minus half sin square. It, uh, here you see 1 minus half size per 2 theta. Uh, we see like neutrinos are not too easy. They are mixing. Yeah, let's put it as mixing. Right? It's mixing. You do not see the oscillation pattern. Okay. So when I say you don't see oscillations, it does not mean they don't mix. They mix. What you do not see is them going up and down okay. with, with them. Okay. This means that they are going up and down. The probability is going up and down. That's oscillations. So when I say you don't see oscillation, means that you do not see this up and down pattern. This crest and drop pattern is not seen. The probability is still different from one. So we all know the going to be lost. Okay. However, if you go to twice the distance, you will not see you know, some oscillating behavior at different distances. You will always see constant. So I'll give you some examples when we talk about it. So now this, we look at some phenomenon, phenomena where uh, wave packets are fine, but we cannot measure the phase between new and new Let's see what, what can happen. So let's say this is what I had written down earlier. Oh, maybe I should, I, I'll leave this to for you for a moment. So this was the difference in the velocities of the two wave packets, new and new. Yeah, two wave packets moving the same momentum, their velocity will be different. Okay. And this is without velocity. Actually, the difference depends on the time as well. So we saw that in that case, the wave packet are separate, then you get this average. So let's go to the next one. I want to look at uh, those uh, cases where we won't be able to determine the phase accurately. Phase is delta m square n by 4. So delta m square is a fixed quantity. Right? It's nature has some value. So not in our However, there is L and there is E. So if you don't know any of these quantities well, then you won't be able to see oscillation value. You will see some average oscillation. So, uh, the way to look at it is the following. No? So, 
mu1 while propagating gains some phase, okay, which I think was just phi1. Mu2 gains a phase called as phi2, and difference between them is a phase difference, okay, which is what we call as phi. So now let's see what happens if the distance is not very good. So this phi, which is a phase difference that you are playing, is basically delta a square del by So let's say in whatever experiment we have, we don't know the value of n exactly. Okay, so when can this happen? This can happen, for example, when we don't know where the window was produced. Okay, so for example, in the atmospheric case also, we don't know exactly where the window was produced. So there is some uncertainty of delta n on the production. So if we don't know the production point, so one can say the production point uncertainty of date time. But in case of that K to K type of experiments, uh, there can be uncertainty in L because we know the universe. So there are universe slows uncertainty, date time will be small. Okay, there will be something but it will be small. I agree. Atmospheric may be large, so we have to quantify it. So these are things that we need to check in all experiments. Sometimes it is more certainty. So if uncertainty in production point is delta L, then the phase uncertainty, uncertainty in the phase, what will that be? Delta phi. This will be just delta n square by 2 e times delta n. So let me do So if you don't know your production point, you don't know your phase by this amount. Now if this amount is small, if that amount, let's say, corresponds to 1 degree, you don't care. You care when you go to precision experiment, but not at this. So 1 degree is not a big deal. Okay, instead of getting sine square of 45 degrees, you get sine square of 46 degrees. However, if this uncertainty becomes very large, let's say it becomes 1, that is very bad. Because the phase difference can be only between 0 and 2 pi. So 0 and 6. So if the phase difference uncertainty is also 2 pi, then basically you know nothing about the phase. So if I want my delta pi is greater than 2 pi, this implies complete decoherence. Experiment, but should check what is the value of delta phi okay, and make sure that it actually is, is okay. okay. So, one way to write it is the displacement delta phi that is delta times square by 3 is by 2 times delta n by. So what does this mean? In the case of atmospheric materials, for example. Do you know what is the value of this approximately? Can you guess? Which is a factor of five is it? Do you know about atmospheric materials? Okay, that's the 
That's one way. Another way, the rest mass of pi. So in your plus see energy is fine. Energy is energy of the round G also. Another way is to just know uh, that when aqueous neutrinos pass through the earth completely, they almost undergo one oscillation. So the wavelength of aqueous neutrinos is on the order of diameter of the earth. So this is the effect at one scale. So within a factor of two, I can say that this delta m square l by 2 e is like uh, 45 degree. DC oscillations when they pass through the earth. So if you look at the, the zenith angle dependence, you remember that the maximum loss of neutrinos uh, at the event is at cost delta equal to minus one, which is when neutrinos pass through the earth completely. So therefore, approximate wavelength is the radius of the earth. So this means that for atmospheric neutrinos, this quantity is of the order of pi. Pi, pi by 2, pi. It's okay. This one to have order of n minus. Let's say pi. So let's say this is the problem. Okay. Now, so this is atmospheric. What is delta in the n approximately? Give me some estimation. For you to know that pass through the world. Ten kilometers. Ten kilometers. One by hundred. One by hundred. One by hundred. So ten kilometers and the earth diameter is ten thousand. Ten thousand point one. Ten thousand. So okay. Let's say pi. This is one in hundred. So that's point two one. So if you want to estimate what is the error in phase, because we don't know exactly where the neutrons are produced. This will be like 0.01 times pi. So it's okay. 0.01 times pi is a small quantity. Therefore, in that atmospheric neutrinos, we will not have to worry about delta in okay. We will have to worry about it if we are going to be very precise. But if you don't want to be very precise, it's okay. So in the first order, we can assume that. This phi is known exactly. So atmospheric it is fine. However, um, some in some other cases, for example, when we come to solar neutrinos, in solar you will find that this is not true. In the solar case, actually, this delta phi is much more, and therefore we will not be able to see this. Right now, I just want you to understand exactly how to calculate the value of either in phase in different situations. So, do we know the delta and what approximation we use for the atmosphere width? Delta is width of atmosphere, L is size of the earth. These are all estimations, okay? No concrete things. It's maybe you have to go and at least look at the number. But this is just something that we can do in two minutes, right? We didn't take much longer. And we, in two minutes, we saw that okay, it looks like delta phi is atmospheric is not so. So the uncertainty in the production point introduces in principle some such. That's exactly what I have written here. Delta phi is delta m square by two e times delta. That's for quantity. The next uncertainty, okay. Now this is something that you cannot avoid in some sense. So see, wave packet separation you cannot avoid. Right? Nature separates the wave packet. So you are not you don't have any control over it. Delta N also you cannot really avoid because it depends on the on where the neutral is produced. So maybe you can have better theories about it, but you can't avoid it. The third source that I will talk about is something that you can in principle avoid. But usually it's very difficult now. And that is the uncertainty in energy. Okay. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Ne bileyim. So let's say I'm able to calculate the energy of the particle only to some accuracy data. So what will happen? So the phi was delta x square L by E. So delta phi would be equal to delta x square L by minus two uh, e square. So what does this mean? If I want see to measure oscillations, so or observing oscillations, my delta phi should be much less than two pi. Okay. So this would mean that my delta m square n by Then can observe oscillations. So this tells me what my accuracy energy should be if I want to see oscillations. So this tells me uh, that see my delta m L by two e is known atmospheric case. We say it is like five. For atmospheric case, for example, so this is five. So five times this something should be much less than two pi. If we want to have energy, if we want to see oscillations, so oscillation means things going up and down. This tells you that in order to see these oscillations, the value of delta e by e should be of the order of at least 10 percent. You can't have uncertainty in energy of 50 percent and see oscillations. The more accurate you become, the better can you see the oscillations. So the ability of an experiment to see oscillations will actually depend very strongly on how good your energy measurement is. You will be able to see that muons have been lost, but you won't be able to see oscillations in. Even in the case of the atmospheric data that I showed you, supercoming so data, you never see oscillations. What do you see? You see muons getting lost. You don't see them getting generated again. Oscillations means that probability should decrease and then increase. In the data that I showed you, I never showed you that PV would increase and then decrease. I saw you still decreasing. A good fit is given by oscillation hypothesis, but that doesn't prove oscillations. Prove oscillations, you have to be able to see that you have P mu mu. As you go away from the source, it goes decreases, then goes back again. That is important for proving oscillation. So only if we are able to show this, can we say that we have seen oscillations. Otherwise, we can say we observe some loss of neutrinos. It's important that uh, we are able to do an experiment in which we are facing this oscillation dip. Okay, so, 
probably you go in Delta Delta. And we say, how much should we do now? How much should we do now? But the concept is clear, right? So if you don't have enough energy resolution, you cannot see also. But we are treating as independently energy and length. So if you consider both these two, so that kind of energy resolution. Yeah. So you need both. Okay. So you need to know accurately the production point, the detection point, and energy resolution. All three are required. So atmospheric we saw that the uh, uncertainty in L had a very small number. So then we remove it. It only was some one person. Now we have to worry about energy. When it comes out energy itself, you need to know to about one person if you want to really see loss rate. Okay, Ten percent. So this is the quantity that you will always need to count for your experiment. Okay. Again, we will come back to it during solar experiments. For atmospheric, uh, we will see now that if you have it 10%, you can actually see something. But if we have it, we may have uh, energy accuracy of 5%, you can do something better. So let's see what we can see in atmospheric. So I'll show you this. So what Super Carbon Party did is, see earlier what they had done, they had only taken zenith angle But our absolute formula, it's very complicated if you write it out of zenith angle. It's just data, but some complicated. It's good to write to have the data in terms of L over E. Because we want oscillations <coughs> in sine squared L over E. So this is a curve. This is L, this is L by E. And this is the data our prediction. So what should happen? If there are real oscillations, you should be able to see things starting at 1 going down. This is log scale. Right? Okay, so, so in linear scale, you would just see oscillations like this. Right? Log scale oscillations will initially be like this, and then you will have some fast oscillations like this. Now, this blue line that you see, can you see the blue clearly? This part. Okay. So this is a dip. This is a dip. That's super coming by there also. So this tip shows that actually beyond the neutrinos we are lost till some value of L over E. After that they actually came on. Okay. So this sort of inputs proves the oscillation. So they do like this experiment and uh, no. so data is uh, black points. Blue is the best fit in oscillation. Prediction is no oscillation. So, the prediction is, so the question is the following. Forget about my prediction. Okay. Let's say I only plot the probability of survival, which I reject, as a function of LOD. So on each neutrino, I know where it came from. So I know its L. I know its energy, because I measure the energy. I just plot things randomly, I mean, blindly, okay, without coming. So only look at the black points, for example. Don't look at the curves at all. You see that in black points, there is a very sharp dip over here, and then things go up. So this uh, this point is a dip, and that is some in quotes proof of oscillation. Because at least one place you observe things going down and coming. And as we talked about before, if we had better accuracy in measurement of energy, we would be able to see better oscillation. In fact, one of the aims of ILO is to be able to measure this energy accurately so that even after this you see a second day. In this plot, you can't see the second day. I mean, this is all almost random. However, okay. it's possible that if we have our energy measurements which are accurate enough, then we will be able to see the second of the energy. That is the importance of measuring energy. So this is the current state. This still does something. So when we see the dip, we can do not some hypothesis. Okay, so for example, so this will say what is what. But if I am correct, this uh, red line 
corresponds to the hypothesis that there is some decoherence happening. So the red line corresponds to decoherence, and uh, you can also the green line. The green line corresponds to decay. What happens if the neutrons get lost, not because of oscillation, but because of decay? Blue is the best field. Blue is the best field with oscillation errors. The error was at the deep are not very small. Yeah, but if you combine everything, that signal is more than this. More than three signals. Yes, okay. No, so data divided by prediction for the loss. So, which basically means normalization. So, this is basically probability. You know, data divided by the oscillation is probability. This is simply probability of the function of L over D. And uh, yeah, you should get deep over that where we expect. In fact, the position of the dip that you observed here tells you the exact value of delta n square by 2 of delta n square itself. Right, because we know what is L by D. So we know that my dip point means that delta n square by 2 is equal to pi. Pi by 2. So earlier what people did is they did a combined fit to all your general language. And you got some value of times. Now you are doing something more direct. You are measuring something. You had a minimum, you say, oh, the minimum is at delta n square L by 4e is equal to pi by 2. So you get a value of delta n square almost directly. So these measurements therefore give you a more accurate value of delta n square. It is again rising at the end, at the right side. Yeah. It is accurate at the straight line. Yeah. No, so there are some experimental details involved. So efficiency goes down, go down, and down. So, so that is some convolution business. Convolution in actual experiment. But qualitatively, this is the. Is this the only data showing oscillation as of now? Yes. Only. All the data give like, one. See, any short method experiment, you only have one end. Right? So you can't see oscillations in some sense. Okay. You can see some oscillations as a, as a function of energy. The resolution is not that. Atmospheric data is the only one where you get a large range of L's. So L change from 10 kilometers to 10,000 kilometers. So large range of L. Large range of E. E can go from 0.2 GeV all the way to 15, 20 GeV. So atmospheric are the ones that give you long ranges of both. And so you can actually make this. For other experiments, it's not even that you make sense to make it. And this is statistically you are saying more than three. Seasons. This is more than three. Seasons. So what this rules out? So it, for example, rules out the decoherence hypothesis. So I think four or five sigma. Decoherence is a bit like a separation. It rules out the hypothesis of neutrino decay to something like this, more than four or five sigma. So what is decay? Decay means that uh, from I have this hypothesis. That, uh, so what was my data, possible data? You said that when neutrons came from top, nothing happened. When they came from bottom, they uh, somehow vanished, we all know. Now my hypothesis is that, of course, I know that neutrons uh, don't interact with matter. Maybe they decay. Maybe there was this neutron that was coming, and on the way it decayed. And now uh, when it traveled through Earth, it can travel longer distances. So it decayed for longer time, so therefore more ugly. This hypothesis in principle is okay. Right? It explains to you why muon neutrinos did not get lost when they came from top, and why they got lost when they came from bottom. So Perfectly fine hypothesis. The main difference with this hypothesis with the oscillation one is that with this hypothesis, your curve cannot, probability cannot go down and come up again. But when you decay, you decay, you go into something else. So this hypothesis of decay cannot give you oscillation behavior coming up. Similarly, our decoherence form that we saw here 
You can do oscillation because cross square plus sine square. Okay. So you could just stay constant without doing it. So therefore there are distinct features okay, and therefore you can compare them and figure out which of them is So, so we get the motion in this paper. So how do you do with how do you do with DG? So uh, so you uh, so what decay? What decay the mass eigen state? What the eigen state? So you say there is mu. Mu of course converted to mu one and mu. And now you say that oh, it's possible <coughs> that this uh, let's say mu two state this may be a decay into something else. Okay, it can decay into mu one or not decay into mu. So it doesn't matter what it decay into. So now what will happen? Your amount of mu2 that you see will be initial amount and this phase change e power minus n square by 2 multiplied by a decay term e by 2 term. This is so this e power minus e by 2 term will correspond to a normal decay with rate of term. So when you are considering DK hypothesis, you are not considering any mixing of the parts. Uh, when it's without, without, but okay, so let's say for the. So then you are considering mu 1 mixing. I have to say I have mu yeah. e, mu 1 there. Yeah. But in principle, you can have both. It has some mixing and some decay. Yeah, yeah. So See, this is not only DK. This is DK plus, plus mixing. See, only, only DK is very difficult to rule out. Because uh, initially when the data came, people tried fitting it only DK. Okay, data only DK is very difficult to do. No, but that has been good of That's good, right? Hmm? That's good. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Only DK is very difficult to satisfy the data with only. Okay, so it's easy to do that. Easy to do that. So you introduce DK plus mixing to see if there can be some mixing plus some decay. So this is sort of decoherence plus decay. It's sort of decoherence plus decay. When it decays, decoherence is almost automatic. Yeah. But it is mixing plus decay. Yeah. So some see, even if there is the oscillator, but you can't see oscillation because of experimental uh, constraints. Mm. So decay, uh, decoherence plus decay still works. Yes. Okay. So this again I will something that I will give to you as a homework problem to see what would happen if there is mixing plus heat. So assignment number two you will get all these things. So this is the data which showed that the oscillation hypothesis also works much better than alternative ones like like DK and So now let's go back to this parameter space. Okay. And now I'll show you something more. So remember earlier we had shown this uh, blue line. This blue line gives you super coming on the on beta square and theta. Then we had also seen this outer line, which is the minus continuous. So this is sorry, sorry, this is uh, this k to outer is k to k. This inner thing, which is uh, color, is minus. But now we have added one more to it. You see the red line? Red line corresponds to SK L over E, which actually corresponds to this thing. So, as I mentioned to you before, uh, if you look at this data, look at the bottom point, and simply say that at this bottom point, my value of phase is pi by 2. I can directly see what is the value of uh, delta n square at this point. <laughs> also, if I see what is the oscillation dip here, this gives me the value of sine square theta. So, therefore, you will see that if you look at this red curve, the red curve determines the value of delta n square much more accurately than anything else. So, without this 
red cloth. So what happened when they reinforce this from here to here? This red cloth has decreased that range to almost back to